Addiction treatment, heart surgery, and brain research are just some of the areas where virtual reality is helping to improve traditional approaches to treatment and training in medicine. At the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital at Stanford, doctors have created a virtual heart application that is being used to teach and explain complex congenital heart defects. In this example, we're inside a heart in which there's a hole in the wall of the ventricle. Some red blood cells, which should be moving up towards the artery, are instead passing through the hole, forcing the heart to work harder to pump blood. This app was initially intended for training medical staff and students. Recently, it's also been used with patients to help explain complex operations. At the Weiss Center in Switzerland, researchers are using VR to peer inside a three-dimensional scan of a mouse brain, created with a high-resolution microscope. The microscope is capable of imaging individual neurons and their connection points, which can be five times thinner than a human hair. Visualizing the brain in VR makes it easier to identify intricate structures that can be difficult to recognize on a screen. The highlighted areas seen here, for example, are parts of the brain that are related to reward and pleasure and can be easily explored from all angles. VR also allows for natural interactions to highlight and manipulate parts of the image. Here, markers are being placed along neuronal pathways, one method for measuring and tracing brain structures. At the University of Houston, researchers have created virtual reality scenarios for treating opioid addiction. Here, an intern demonstrates using the VR app to simulate scenarios which might trigger a heroin craving. What she's seeing in the VR headset is projected on a wall in the treatment room. During the simulation, sensors collect biodata such as heart rate and muscle tension to provide a quantitative assessment of craving. The ability to develop coping skills in a controlled, realistic environment could help reduce the high levels of relapse associated with traditional rehabilitation programs, according to Dr. Mickey Washburn, who leads the program.